Hey guys, that was Cool Tracks here, and I said if my top 10 Nintendo games under $10 video got enough positive feedback, and if you guys wanted it, I would do a, another video just like that, but for PlayStation instead, and it did get that positive reception, so I'm not the kind of person to promise things without um, giving them, so here's top 10 PlayStation games for under $10. Now, this video wasn't very hard to make, this list really, because... Uh, there's lots of, unlike Nintendo, there's lots of cheap PlayStation games on pretty much all the PlayStation systems. So all I had to do was go through my collection and just find what I thought were the best ones. And that was probably a bit harder. So, yeah, let's just get right into it. So I tried to pick out at least one game for every PlayStation system I have, except for um, PS4, because I don't have a PS4. But I have it for pretty much uh, PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, and as well as the PSP and the PS Vita. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, starting off with PS1, we have Gex. Now, Gex is a very, very fun game. It's a platformer that takes place uh, in like inside of a TV. You play as uh, the lizard Gex, and he likes TV a lot. And he just decide he he's a I haven't played this game in a long time, but I think he like wins like a lot of money, so he he, he just gets addicted to TV because he's a like, huge flat screen in his house. And it's weird. It's a it's a weird game, but it's definitely a, a very, very fun game. And Square Enix even said that they were gonna do uh, another Gex game soon. They were looking for interest, so yeah. And this is one of those like failed 90s mascots, it never really caught on too well, but it, it has good reception for all the games that it has. This is the first game, just Gex. It's also on um, Sega Saturn and 3DO and all that stuff, and PC, but PlayStation uh, is the cheapest version. It goes for like uh, 8 to $12, so you can find it for under 10 but the maximum you're going to pay is 12 But yeah, really, really good game, Gex. So. Now moving on to PlayStation 2, I decided to pick out... Crazy Taxi. Now I know what you guys are gonna say this is not a PlayStation 2 exclusive. This is on like a lot of things. This is on Sega Dreamcast. This is on GameCube. This is on uh, 360. It's on a lot of stuff. But I feel like you know this game is just super super cheap. It goes for like four to eight dollars. Uh, last time I checked. So yeah, it's very very fun. It's like arcade. Um, it's not really a racing game, let me explain. So, you're just driving on a taxi, picking up passengers, and you're supposed to do really crazy tricks to get a lot of money. And it sounds like a stupid concept, and you have to like, drop people off and stuff. It sounds like a stupid concept, but it's very, very entertaining. Uh, I definitely recommend Crazy Taxi um, if you've never played it. It's very, really good, and it's a, there's a reason why it's one of the best Sega games out there. So, yeah, Crazy Taxi. Next up is PlayStation 3. Now I got well, I got five games here for PlayStation 3. Um, this is the most uh, basically half this list is PS3. So all the PS3 people watching the watching this, uh, I think you guys will be happy to see that. So first off uh, is the Uncharted uh, trilogy: Uncharted 1, which Uncharted Drake's Fortune, Uncharted 2: Among Thieves, and Uncharted 3: Drake's Deception. These games are incredible, and I know they released the Nathan Drake collection on PS4. But if you don't have a PS4 yet and you got a PS3 and you haven't played these, definitely give them a go. They're they're fantastic games, especially two and kind of three. But two is the best one in my opinion and a lot of people's opinions because two has just superb, superb like uh, settings and stuff. You know, you're on trains sometimes, you're in the, like ice caverns sometimes, you're playing monsters. Really good games in general. All three of these uh, two is definitely my favorite. Like I said. Um, and these games are very, very cheap. If you don't have a PS4, these are definitely uh, great games to get. Uh, I'm trying to one Drake's. I'm trying to Drake's Fortune goes for like three to five dollars, maybe even less. Charted two, same. And Charted three, uh, maximum you're gonna pay is like five dollars. These are just super, super cheap, but very enjoyable. If you like uh, Indiana Jones and like Tomb Raider, then you're definitely gonna enjoy these. These are great, great games. I uh, definitely recommend the Uncharted games on PS3, and if you have a PS4, then the Nathan Drake collection is really good too, although that's not going to run you um, really cheap like these. You might have to pay like $20 to $30 for that, but talking about PS3, Uncharted must-haves. Uh, and I have two more games here. I have Infamous and Infamous 2. So these two games are really good. Um, I played Infamous 2 not on my PS3 yet, but I played on someone else's PS3 before I had one, and it's a blast. It's just so much fun jumping around on the buildings and just zapping stuff, zapping people and like fighting enemies and like just so much like open worldness in this game. That's a word. Infamous one, Infamous the first one uh, has a lot of draw distance issues and all that, but it's a two, it's an early PS3 game. It even has the original PS3. Uh, spine, unlike this one, which is a newer PS3 game. But really, there you can't go wrong with either. Infamous 2 is definitely a better game, but Infamous 1 is still great. And for like what, three to five dollars, maybe six max, you just can't go wrong. Both these games are fantastic. 
you get the duology for like less than 10 bucks. Pretty great games. Uh, so yeah, that's the infamous game series. So that's it for PS3. Now let's move on to handhelds where we have a few games here. Um, it was kind of harder for these, but I managed to guess them out. So first off for PSP is Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles. Now this game is just absolutely fantastic. So you're getting Castlevania uh, Rondo of Blood, which I believe was a Turbo Graphic 16 game. I'm not sure or PC Engine Japan what it's called. And they brought it here, and it's not it's an okay game. They remade it for the PSP in this, um, and the remake's all right. The graphics just kind of look a little muddy. I don't know. I just don't like uh, the graphics all that much. But it also has Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. But yeah. So, the Symphony of the Night is just fantastic. Uh, I haven't beat it, but from what I've played, it's absolutely amazing. It's like Metroidvania, like that's where the term came from, uh, because of Met like Super Metroid and Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So, Castlevania Symphony of the Night it, like inspired like dozens and dozens of games in the future. So that just goes to show you how amazing this is. So you're getting two uh, great games. Round of Blood isn't all that great uh, compared to Symphony of the Night, but it's still a good game. And but it's really really hard just remember that and you need to get to a certain point to get Symphony of the Night so if you're up for the challenge then uh, then I definitely recommend this but yeah two games for ca two Castlevania games you really can't go wrong on the go and this retails for five to ten dollars nothing more literally just very very cheap fun in fact I got my copy for ten bucks as you can see right there uh, terrific game definitely recommend Castlevania the Dracula X Chronicles the next PSP game uh, is Daxter. Now, Daxter, I used to have this game when I was like six years old. When I had the my old PSP, I got a new one. Not a new one, but I, got, and I picked up a used one from a friend. He gave it to me for free uh, two years back. But anyways, Daxter is fantastic. I remember being this as uh, when I was like really, really young, and I was just mind blown how much fun it is. So it's a 3D platformer with uh, elements of like, um, basically you're Daxter from, this is the same Daxter from Jack and Daxter, but you're not like, Jack and Daxter is very different than this, because Jack and Daxter you're actually like fighting with Jack, but this one you control Daxter, and you're probably wondering how he attacks, well he has this little gun here, and you can shoot fire, you can shoot like atomic, like waves, you can shoot just like spray, and you have to kill bugs, the bugs are the main enemies. There are soldiers, like actual soldiers with guns, but you can't fight them because he would just get wrecked easily. So you have to, it's like, so you have to, there's like a sneak, you have to sneak around. So it's a lot like, uh, it's like a stealth game in that aspect. So it's a 3D platformer and a stealth game. Uh, really can't go wrong. And there's also some uh, dream states where basically you can play as him, imagining himself in different movies like Lord of the Rings, Braveheart, uh, Matrix. So it's really, really cool. And yeah, Daxter is fantastic. Oh, and Indiana Jones, forgot that. But yeah, Daxter is fantastic. Um, if you never played it, it's so, so cheap. It's like 3 to $8. Really can't go wrong with that. 3 to $8. I got mine for 7 bucks. Um, just fantastic game. And Daxter is definitely a must-have on the PSP if you never played it. It's a great, great game. And last game is for the PS Vita. And this game is... Freedom Wars. Now, Freedom Wars is a lot like Monster Hunter, if, or like God Eater, or any of those like hunting games. Um, but it has some very cool, unique things about it. For one, uh, the online leaderboard is a lot more accessible because it, the games like Monster Hunter, because they're on 3DS, right? So this is a lot more streamlined because it's on the PlayStation Network, so you got that going for you. And if you're a fan of Monster Hunter, but you don't have a 3DS and you don't want to buy a 3DS, this is definitely the next best thing, along with God Eater, but that's another game. Um, to get because you got eight player four v fours. You got ton the guys really good campaign. I haven't beat it, but I've played a decent amount. And it's really really fun. And basically, the reason why it's called Freedom Wars is because you're in a jail cell and you have to you have to lower your years by getting out of jail. It's kind of weird. It takes place in like a utopian society. I don't really care about the characters or anything like that. It, it's just fun shooting monsters and just like saving civilians and stuff. It's fun fun game. Um, and you're supposed to get like resources for your um, unit and stuff. Freedom Wars is definitely a fun, fun game. Uh, soundtrack is good, gameplay is good. That's all you can really ask for. And the game goes for eight to twelve dollars. Seven is probably the lowest you can probably get it for. I got mine for five. It was on sale, uh, brand new, five bucks. You really can't go wrong with that. But yeah, this is definitely a fun, fun game. Uh, I want to pay more than fifteen. I think that's where I'd probably stop. But 
yeah, Freedom Wars, definitely a fun, fun game. So yeah, guys, those are all the top 10 games for uh, that are under $10 for PlayStation systems. Um, I was um, I was gonna include a lot more, but I wanted to keep it at 10 because you know I wanted to just because I could have a lot more PS3 games, but a lot of them are just multiplats, so I don't think it would fit. Same with PS2 and stuff. So yeah. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment down below any PlayStation games under $10 that you would recommend. Uh, if any of these games interest you, just let me know in the comments. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So thank you guys, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time with more videos.